In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really simple dashboard where we can select our athlete name as well as a metric that we'd like to look at and we can automatically display a low line, an average line, and then a max line for that athlete or at the click of a checkbox, we can automatically change those references to reference the whole team. This is going to be a really powerful trick if you're looking at any specific metrics and want to know how this athlete fares against their previous scores or other athletes on the team. So let's get after it. Okay, so in order to get this project started, I've just gone ahead and outlined some of the key areas on the sheet where we're going to be putting certain information. And um, for your sheet, I mean, you could do this any way that you want and put this information however you want and organize it and then add the graph to whatever sort of project you're working on. But for the purpose of this, this is how we're going to set it up. Now, the first thing you're gonna to need to know is we have a data file here, which has the different athletes, their position, um, and some testing variables, and that's what we're gonna actually be pulling our data from. So the first thing we're gonna do is just create a box where we can actually select our athlete name, and this is going to allow us to pull out their values. So under the select athlete box, we're going to go to data, um, data validation and select list from range. And then I'm going to select the data range and I'm just going to take this first column, but I'm going to start it at a two. So we're going to go from a two all the way down, um, the a column, because that is where my names are stored. And when I hit okay, Google sheets is pretty smart. So it will not show me any duplicates. I will only be able to select the three athletes that I've select that I've, um, that are in that list. So then part two, we're going to now use um, a formula to pull out their actual position. So for this, I'm going to use a VLOOKUP formula and it's gonna look like this. I'm going to type equals VLOOKUP, open that up. It's going to ask me what I want to look for. I want to look for this athlete name, which is stored in E3. Then when I close this off, um, it's going to ask me the range that I want to look for it in. If I go to my data range, I'm going to select this whole data table and then comma, it's going to ask me the index column. So I want to look at position. So I'm going to index column one, two, three across. And then I'm going to type in false because the data is not sorted. When I close this off, what we should do is automatically pull out the position for that athlete. Okay, so that's just a really powerful way if you want to match for one variable and pull out another variable. So then the next piece is we're gonna build out this menu down here where we can select our options from which to actually um, create our graph. So the first thing we need is our team compare and all that is going to be in this first box is if I go to insert and insert a checkbox, I'm going to have this checkbox now in the cell that I can either um, check or uncheck. And to show you what that does, if I just hit equals this cell, when that is unchecked, it's giving me a value of false. And when it is checked, I'm going to get a value of true. So that just shows you how the checkboxes work. And I'm going to delete that just to get out of the way. Then number two, what I wanna do is actually have a drop down menu to select my metric. So same way we did for athlete one, I'm just going to go to data, data validation, and my list this time is going to be this row. So I'm gonna start from E1, go all the way across to L1 and hit okay, and hit save. And when I go back, now I should be able to select um, any of the metrics that I wanna look at. And then finally, the last thing that we need to set this up is a place to select the dates. So what we can do is do another data validation and I can do the range and I'm going to just select the date column and hit um, B2 all the way down to B because the dates start in B2. And when I hit OK, um, I will only be able to select the dates from that graph. Okay, so that is all of the key information that we need for our chart. So now we have to start doing some lookup formulas to pull out the variables based on the things that we select. So the first thing that we're gonna pull out is the date. 
you just got to make the text um, black here. The first thing we want to pull out is the date, um, the athlete name, and the, the actual variable that we're looking at. So I'm going to type in equals here. So we're setting up this little table where I'm going to be pulling out the variables. The way that we're going to do this, it's going to be really important that this little table, that the headings actually match the headings here. Okay, so we have date, athlete name, and CMJ. The date is always going to be equal to the one that we select. And then the athlete name is going to be equal to the one that we select. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a new formula that we've never used on the channel before called dget. And what dget does is it looks through a database of values and matches based on a set of criteria and then pulls out one variable. Now we could do this with filter, we could do this with index match, we could do this with vlookup, but we're going to use dget so that I can um, introduce you to a new formula that you may not be able to that you may not have used before. So how this formula works is I'm going to type equals dget, open that up, and it's going to ask me where my actual database is. So I'm going to go to my data and select all of the cells. So in this case, we have data A to L. And then I'm going to hit comma, and it's going to ask me what the field is that I'm actually looking for. Okay. In this case, the field is going to be um, B11. So we're looking for the field of counter movement jump. And that's why we've selected our variables right from the headers. And then comma one more time, it's going to ask me what my actual criteria is. Now here's the cool thing about dget. It's smart enough to know that we're looking in a database and if I just um, highlight all of these cells as my criteria, it's going to know to look in the date column and look for this date and the athlete name column and look for this athlete. So it should see in this data column, or sorry, in this data table, we're going to look for the value of counter movement date or counter movement jump when the date is equal to this and when the athlete name is equal to this. When I close this off, it should give us our formula or our value. And if I select any other test, because of the way that we've set this up, you can see that it automatically changes to reflect those values. So that's a really powerful formula if you are looking for one variable out of a full data table. Now the caveat to that is if there are multiple matches for that, then it's going to give us an error formula. Okay, so this is only good when there's one unique, um, one unique value that we're looking for. So there's only one counter movement jump from athlete one on this date. Okay, so that's just a caveat to that. So that's how we're going to get that value. And then next what we're going to want to do is pull out the average, uh, maximum and minimum. So I'm going to type in um, the athlete's name. So again, we'll choose here. And then what we want is average, max and min. And we already know how to find this value. So I'm just going to copy this dget formula down there and paste it in. So we have that formula all figured out. Now for the average max and min values, what we want to do is build in the functionality that we can either do it by athlete or we can do it by the whole team. So we're going to build out a filter formula to create that range. So how this is going to look is equals filter, open this up and it's going to ask us what the range we actually want to look for is. Okay. In this case, the range is going to be the actual value that we've selected. So counter movement jump. So in this, we're going to have to do an index match for that. So what I'm going to type in is index, open this up and the references that we're going to use is the actual data um, columns. So what I'm going to choose is a all the way to L, but we only want a two to L and I'll show you why that's important in a few seconds. So we're taking basically all of the data and then comma, it's going to ask us what row we want. Well, we don't care what row we want. We just want to look for a column. So for column, we put one more comma. We want to match to the actual one that we've chosen. So what I'm going to type in here is match, open that up. And we want to look for this name. Okay. Of the actual, um, test that we've chosen. And we want to look for it in the actual headers row. So I'm going to select data one to one all the way across. 
and we want to match for it when it is um, an exact match. So I'm gonna type in false and open that up, sorry, and close that off. And then I'm gonna close off the index. Okay, so if I go back to here, it's gonna give us an error right now because we have no conditions from which to look for it. So let's look at it um, when athlete name equals athlete name. So let's try this. When um, data athlete name equals the athlete name that we've actually chosen. And you can see that it gives us all of our values. Okay, so one interesting caveat about the filter formula is the number of rows that you actually put into the formula is the number of rows that you actually have to pull out. So I had to look from data A2 to A to equals athlete name, but we don't wanna look for just athlete name. We wanna look for a few different things. So the first thing that we wanna look for is whether or not we are comparing to just the team or the athlete, okay? So what this is gonna look, look like is we have to actually build in an if formula in here. So we're gonna type in if, and what we wanna look for is if this is true, um, D10, meaning that we're going to be looking for a team compare, then what I'm going to do here is the value, if that is true, then I want to filter out all of the values. So we're going to look to, we're going to create a formula here that just will filter out everything based on what we've done. So what we're going to use is a formula called is blank. And we're going to filter out basically all of the athlete names that aren't blank. So I'm going to go A2 to A. And what this is going to return, if, if these are blank, it's going to give us a value of um, true. But because we know that they're not going to be blank, we can do equals false. And the only reason that we're doing this is we're trying to tell it that if the um, team compare is true, then we want to filter out all of the values and not separate it out by athlete, okay? Then the second one is if it's false, meaning we only want to separate it out by athlete, then we actually want to perform our A2 a2 to equal the athlete that we're looking at. So again, we'll match to E3. And if I close off this if formula and hit enter, nothing's going to change. But now when we select the team compare, you can see that it pulls out all the values from the team. Okay, so this is our range based on um, whether we're comparing to the team or not. So what this looks like is filter, index match to find the actual range that we're looking for. And then we do this if formula to look at that value. So if D10 is true, meaning we've clicked this checkbox, then we want to filter out everything. And we can do that by looking to filter out everything that is not blank. Okay, so we type is blank, the data range in question. And then when that equals false, um, then we're not gonna filter that out, but it should always be true. Otherwise, we're going to match athlete name column to athlete name. Then the final variable that we want to build into here is the actual date. So I want to only filter out all of the data up to this date. So what this looks like is I can take the date column, in this case B2 to B, and I only want that when that is less than or equal to the actual date that we have selected. So I'll hit enter here. And now you can see that changes, but as we change the date, that changes the amount of values we have, and this still works here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I know there was a lot to that, but, it's, but again, just to take you through the formula, index, we're matching for the actual column that we want, and then using an if formula to build in the functionality to add or take away the team compare, as well as uh, matching for the date when it is less than or equal to the date that we've selected. Now the cool thing about this is now that this filter formula actually works, all we have to do is paste this inside of an average value or average formula because it's going to take all of these values and take the average of them. So what this looks like is I'm just going to take this whole formula here all the way from filter all the way over, hit control C to copy it. And under average, I'm just gonna type equals average, open that up, paste that whole formula in there, close it off, and it's gonna give me the average. Under max, I'm gonna type equals max, paste that whole formula in there, and it'll give me the max. 
And then under min, I'm going to type equals min. Open that up, paste the whole formula in there, and then it'll give me the min. And because we've built that filter formula out, you can see that as I change this, all of the values are going to change to reflect that. If we want to include the team, we can include the team compare, or we can still change the athlete. And you can see it'll work. Okay. So that's how we're going to do that piece. Now it's just a matter of building out our graph. So what I can do here is just highlight all of these and go to insert chart. And you can see it's going to give me a graph with all of the values already on it. And all I'm going to do is go to column chart, but I'll change it to a, cus a combo chart. And it's going to give me a, a graph that looks kind of like this. When I go to customize, I'm going to turn off the legend. And now I can just take the series. I'll take the average series. And I actually want that to be sort of like a yellow color. And I'm going to make it a stepped area. And I'll take the line dash and change it to like a dashed line, make it four pixels. And then the area piece, um, sorry, I want the line turned on. The actual area we want to be um, 0% so we can't see it. So that's how we change that to be there. And then we'll just do the other two as well. So for the minimum, we're going to want it to be a red value. Stepped area, dashed line, four pixels thickness, turn off the area. And for the uh, maximum value, we're going to want it to be sort of a green color and stepped area line dash turn off the area and four pixels and now we have this graph that displays both our minimum values and our maximum values as well as the average and we can change it to scale for the actual team for any one of these values and as we change the dates all of the values are actually going to change around to reflect um, what we're looking at okay so, I mean, this is a really powerful type of graph because you can use this to display any number of metrics and it will automatically update and change to display anything that you're looking at. So I hope this trick helps you out. And if it does, please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. And if you could share this video on social media so that more coaches can see it, that would be great. Thank you.